This is a raspberry pie, slightly anabolized. We've made some modifications that I'll explain to you, but yes, it's a raspberry. Its simplicity and versatility have made this board the ideal base for anyone wanting to build a lot of things, really. You can find lots of things, like people who have put together a kind of mini notebook based on Raspberry. There's a smart mirror for you to see widgets, and even a kind of mini Super Nintendo. Or would it be Super Mini Nintendo? It's up to you. So you can see your digits in it, it's up to you. And today we're going to see if its capacity is enough for games and other activities. This is version 5, which is the basis of our mini PC. It's now a quad-core with four Cortex-A76 cores, and it's operating at a much faster 2.4 GHz. The graphics chip is a Broadcom, and the memory has also been bumped up to 8 GB. Here we're using the Pyroman 5, which is a case for the Raspberry Pi 5, but it doesn't just provide protection for the board. It's not just an external part. It's also a whole set of accessories, which includes the two fans for the case, and also a mini cooler to cool the so C. And look at that, it's like a mini tower cooler, only very small. The Pyroman 5 also adds a card reader, an infrared receiver, and even a screen where you can see system information. The Raspberry Pi 5 has a very important detail, the power supply, which seems simple at first. After all, it basically uses a USB-C connector, so you can connect even a power bank, for example, it may be enough to power it, but there are a few pitfalls in this system. Although it's pretty straightforward, or seemingly simple, to get a power supply to supply the system, it's limited to 5 volts. And why does that matter? Standard, most USB power supplies are 5 volts, but they often combine this with 3 IUMs. By the power equation, we have amps versus voltage, and we have about 15 watts of power, 3 times 5 equals 15. That's enough to carry the Raspberry Pi 5, but it can exceed that. You may have performance limitations if you're looking for heavier applications or if you have to put in a lot of work. And here comes the problem. Most power supplies don't just increase the current strength, they increase the current strength and the voltage. This will make it operate outside the 5 volts, and the Raspberry is very lean. It tries to be the most compact project possible for you to have a complete computer, so it doesn't even have the capacity to work with different voltages. It doesn't have that here in the project. It only knows how to operate with a 5 volt supply. So you'll need a very specific battery if you want to exceed 15 volts, which is exactly what I have here. But then you might wonder what you can do with one of these compact computers. And I'll tell you, you can really do a lot of different things, especially if you like getting into the guts of operating systems, right? But you can start in a very basic way, thinking of it as just another computer. So you can do activities that you would do on your laptop, on your PC, using various different operating systems. There is a lot of software that you can run, but the expectation, perhaps, of those who are going to run it on the desktop, depending on what they are going to do, may be a little frustrated, depending on the aspect that the person thinks of using the Raspberry Pi. But you can think of it as a computer for you to access the Internet, access any site that you would access on Windows very quietly, watch YouTube, listen to music on Spotify, you can even run some games and such. The first step is to install a few things from Pi Apps if you want it to look as close to Windows as possible. So web browsers, video streaming, office applications, editors, and so on. In addition to modifying the panel here, which is showing the information, I even have other data. So for example, I have the temperature here, it's operating at 45 degrees, it's saying it's at zero RPM. And it is, it's running, it has, for example, how much storage is being used. We have 20% of it used of the seven gigabytes of memory. Of the eight gigabytes of memory, we have one gigabyte used, almost two. So about 20% of the memory occupied use of the four processing cores, and in general, it's around 30%. But I think one of the most interesting things about the Raspberry Pi is that it isn't limited to the proposal of a desktop operating system. 
It really shines when you use the power of that hardware for it to work coupled with some service, say a server for something. For, or even, for those who are more enthusiastic about old games, make a retro box of life, a Retropy, that's even the name of one of the systems, Retropy, that you can run on the Raspberry Pi to basically have emulators of everything, I think PlayStation 2, 3, backwards, practically everything. It's whatever the hardware can handle, right? Because the Raspberry Pi's GPU, even for cost reasons, isn't that strong, right? In fact, we're using the Raspberry Pi 5. It is, in theory, the most powerful of them, but it still has lightweight hardware given its purpose, right? It wants to be an embedded system, everything, a development kit that has an affordable initial cost. Now let's see how it works as standard, and what we can do, and how it performs in some game. Who knows? clicking on some random videos and it's already feeling it a little bit the GPU has gone up a lot to play this video it's flowing but it's using a lot of the systems performance it's limited full HD here and let the resolution go up more let's see if the video runs smoothly it's not quite 60 frames now it seems to be running almost 60 FPS there's a bit of a frame drop but it manages to run a YouTube video let's see if we can raise the resolution more than that. I changed the screen resolution to full HD because I've seen that Raspberry OS doesn't handle a 4K interface very well. Here's what it looks like. For example, this screen here, I'm going to bring it up to 4K. Let's see if that frees up YouTube as well. We can play videos in 4K. The system hasn't scaled very well to 4K. I don't know if you're noticing, but it's a bit hard to read. Some more here. No, it didn't let me go any further than that. So probably some hardware limitation. YouTube is holding it back until full HD resolution. If you have any other videos that are certainly in 4K, to make more video, 8K HDR should have a 4K option. No, it doesn't. It's a very light system, so it's only going to be good for a few activities that aren't too heavy. If you want to play around with it and use it as a computer, it can even run some more modest games, or it can be used as a basic PC for you to do a few things. It still makes a lot more sense to spend a little more and get a complete PC rather than aiming for this one. If you really want a computer, if you want to work, if you want to do everyday things, it's too expensive for that to a certain extent and depending on the region you buy it from, as much as it is a platform trying to democratize access to computer technology, but it already has, mainly its focus is to be this initial platform for you to then go on to do other things around it, like we turned it into a mini PC gamer with Pyroman 5 here. But you can do other things that I even think are more interesting, or at least it will have a better performance than what we're playing with here. So that's it, folks. I'm done for today, and please consider signing up. Thank you for your visit, and see you in the next video.